one. All right, so we haven't done a real in-depth video of this car before. We did some driving videos and I think some build videos, but didn't really explain what it is and what I've done to it. So I'm gonna to try to do that in this video. What it is, is this is a Bradley GT kit car. So approximately 1987 was the manufacturer date on that. And it was designed to come in a kit and you take an old Volkswagen chassis, Volkswagen Beetle chassis, and you put this cool body on that. And it's supposed to be a cost-effective way to get a supercar. But the Volkswagen stuff, I don't know. It was sort of this, it's underwhelming for the appearance of the car, in my opinion. And if you look like you're fast, you should be fast. Um, so I changed it up because I wasn't going to restore a Volkswagen. Um, instead, I used a 1989 Toyota Hilux chassis. This is a V6, five-speed, uh, high-low, four by four. And I basically just shortened the chassis of the truck uh, about 30 inches to match the wheelbase of this body. Modified the frame slightly, but for the most part, it's stock Toyota. Uh, it's got long tube headers with uh, pretty much a straight exhaust and a limited slip. But other than that, it's pretty much stock. Originally, the car was rear engine Volkswagen design. Instead, it is front engine. So we had to make some accommodations for the engine here. Uh, a little bit of work with the Sawzall and there you have it. Inside we had to change a little bit. Um, outside we had to change a little bit too, but mostly we tried to keep the wheelbase the same. You know, basically just some custom work. Have some tube bumpers on the front and the rear, just to make it a little, a little cooler. 32 inch BF Goodrich KM2s. These are uh, sort of a mud tire. They make a little bit of noise on the street, but they just look awesome and they're really, really good in the mud. Pretty interesting entry point here. You got your gold wing doors. This is pretty much stock uh, Bradley GT stuff. They're not particularly well engineered. There's a little bit of flex in it. It doesn't really project quality when you close it, but hey, it's not a Rolls Royce. Inside is pretty straightforward. You got Toyota column, Momo steering wheel. I had to custom make this floor. And there's a really unique driving position to this car because it's such a narrow body or, or short, uh, your headroom is terrible. Um, so to make it work, I, I wanted to run actual automotive seats to try to increase the comfort of the car. So I took some Mazda Miata seats. Um, they're pretty narrow um, and kind of a sport seat. So I notched it down into the floor and sort of tucked it in the frame uh, that way you sit as low as possible. Basically underneath the seat is the bottom of the car. It's a little bit tough getting in and out of this thing, but for me it's good. The uh, window is super narrow, so <laughs> when you're off-roading or going up a hill, you see more engine than the trail, but um, you got to make sacrifices with a car like this. Um, headroom, you know, that's where you're at. I'm not sure how tall I am, but... Uh, you're not sure how tall you are? No, I'm not sure how tall I am, but if you're taller than me, you might have problems fitting in this car. One roll bar here. Um, just figured you gotta be somewhat concerned about safety. So I added a roll bar that also ties in with these uh, four point harnesses, which fit, you know, as they do. Um, as far as interior parts, you got the factory Toyota wiring harness from the truck is all in it and preserved for the most part. I simplified it substantially. So you have your headlights um, and because you have your stock column, you have stock key, steering wheel lock, all that stuff is still maintained. Um, the gauge cluster is Toyota, obviously. The dash is Bradley GT and it's sort of, I meshed it together as best I could and it seems to fit good. Um, you know, all the gauges are functional. Uh, speedometer is even pretty close to being right. Um, I guess we can cover the cooling system. There is a heater core here. Um, it doesn't work that great, but you don't really need it that much. Uh, the radiator hoses, 
It's rubber that runs all the way. It tucks into the body, runs through the rocker panel, and then pops back out in the rear to go to the radiator. The back glass will open up like so. You got quite a bit of space back here to put your gear. The back of this, we got the radiator. We got some custom, I cut these holes and put some panels on there. This is a, just a, I think it's out of a Volvo radiator, just mounted on the bottom there with a uh, electric fan and it's all thermostat controlled. So this will come on and off as it needs to. Um, the car has been running consistent uh, temperatures, no problem. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, I did prior to me uh, replacing the head gasket. I had to do that pretty much as soon as I built the car. I realized it was bad and uh, went through it and replaced it. The fuel tank is mounted back here. Um, that is a custom made tank out of eighth inch steel. So very, very rigidly built tank. It runs a factory Toyota fuel pump, which is brand new and a Toyota fuel gauge, which is also new. Slightly modified both of those. As far as the condition of the body on this, um, it was pretty decent when I got it. There was a couple blemishes here and there. And I don't know if it's gonna come out in the camera, but you can see where I touched up the paint, I found some color match paint and uh, I got it pretty close, but it's still, you can tell up close, you can tell it's not right. Um, there's door gap is terrible, but anybody who's dealt with a fiberglass car knows that the fit and finish is not very good. I did trim these wheel wells out quite a bit from where they were factory, um, as far as clearance wise, they're just enough and no more, you know, so it's as discreet as possible and it looks, the appearance is uh, almost factory, but we're far from that here. These flip up headlights, the original mechanism for it that came with the kit was crap and unusable. I used a 12 volt articulating uh, servo cylinder, whatever you call it. And this is not just looks, this car does really, really good off-road. Um, we've had it on quite a bit of trails. I think I, think I put around 2,000 something miles on this car just from driving it around here and there. It's pretty well shook down. I really tried to build the car uh, as serviceable as possible because, you know, when you're dealing with a custom, I've dealt with a lot, I run a shop and do custom cars and I end up fixing other people's custom work a lot. It's, if you have to think it through and really consider that this thing is gonna be a long-term uh, vehicle for somebody. So you have to make sure everything is serviceable properly and we'll at least try to, you know, some people never think that far ahead. Yeah, so we're gonna go for a little drive, I guess, and give you a feel for what it is to drive this thing around. as it looks, but still pretty good. So we're doing 70 mile an hour at 3,000 RPMs. Pretty good cruising speed. Slight vibration and road noise, but it's to be expected. You know, perfectly stable car. Well, not perfectly, but it's stable. So the drivability on this is actually really quite good considering what it is. Um, I've daily driven this car on and off for the last six months since I built it. Um, I really like it. I'm getting used to it. Uh, it definitely gets a lot of attention at gas stations and such. Being that it's Toyota components, it's, uh, you know, very workable on the street. You certainly get the road noise with the tires um, and the suspension is a little bit stiff and flexible, I guess. Um, you, know, you get the creaks and the groans about the body work, uh, which is typical for the fiberglass. Check engine light is on for some minor thing. I'm not too concerned about it. As far as interior comforts, you don't have much. You have a heater and a cigarette lighter. If you can stand the seating, seating position in it um, and the visibility, um, those are two compromises, but you gotta make sacrifices to drive something cool. Thank you. 